You are listening to the Fits and Healthy Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Lauren Fitzgerald, also known as Lauren Fitz. I'm a medical doctor, a fitness instructor, an entrepreneur, a health and fitness coach, but most importantly, I am a lover of life. And here on the Fits and Healthy Podcast, I intend to give you a ton of great information and knowledge that will serve as potential power so that you can live a life by design and make it more fits and healthy. And don't forget to listen to the disclaimer at the end. I'm not your doctor, yo. All right. Enjoy the episode. Much love. Ciao. Hello and welcome to the Fits and Healthy Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Lauren Fitzgerald, and I am joined by my beautiful co-host, Symphony from (laughs) symphony.com. Hey, girl. Hey. (laughs) Um, Okay, so uh, you already mentioned BPA, which is is, is, um, found in tons of plastics. Mm -hmm. Um, One thing I don't think people realize, and this is not just for thyroid, but um, it also uh, affects estrogen, uh, you know, a a really important hormone that can if it's out of of balance, it can jack with everything and can mimic a lot of the symptoms of hypothyroidism, Mm -hmm. you know, like increased weight gain and and difficulty losing weight and whatnot. Um, but, uh, so BPA is a, um, it's found in plastics. And if you have a, a, let's say a classic example is water bottles. Mm -hmm. So when you have a water bottle that's plastic, it's most likely lined with BPA. And yeah. if it is exposed to UV and it has liquid in it, that BPA is going to seep into that, that water. And so literally think about it when, and I mean, I've done this quite a few, not quite, I don't haven't done it in a while, but I have done it before you have a water bottle, you drink about half of it, you leave it in your car and then you go in and your, your car is exposed to, to sun. So mm-hmm. it's got UV and, and you get back. And not only does the water, when you taste it, taste warmer than you'd like, but it tastes plasticky, right? Mm-hmm. Well, it's because that plastic seeped into your water That's and that, crazy. and that BPA gets into your body and it gets into your fat cells and, and it causes bad stuff like hormone disruption. I mean, it, it it's, it's a hen, uh, endocrine disruptor. And it's interesting because if you think about it, you have no idea if that water in that bottle has been exposed to heat like that when it's being transported to right. whatever store right. that you buy it from and stuff. So even if you're keeping it in the fridge, making sure it's not hitting right. sunlight, you have no control over it up until it gets into your hands. Right. And I'm glad you said that because it's not heat, it's sunlight. So it's UV, but, but oh, most okay. likely, um, most likely those bottles have been exposed to sun at yeah. some point. Yeah. So, so that's why it's so important. Like I don't buy bottles of water anymore. Hmm. Um, because I mean, think about all of the steps from the factory that the, yeah. the bottles were, you know, right. filled with water. And usually you guys, you, most of that water is identical to the tap water that's coming out of your sink. Just so hmm. you know, uh, like we'll, we'll talk about that on the water episode that, yeah. that we will do. So whoever is writing notes, Robert, <laughs> <laughs> Hint, upcoming hint. episode water <laughs> um so okay man we i mean like we barely scratched the surface i know that's why i told you we can't condense this topic no, it's got to no. be a two parter because this is really important information most most definitely okay so so far let me just like open it up like what kind of questions do you have so far that just listening to what i've said because because you're the voice of the people right now. So if somebody feels like they may have hyper or hypothyroidism, what is the like what is the first step that they need to do? That's a great question. Okay. So first step is know that uh, it's your mindset knowing that hmm more than likely you can reverse these symptoms on your own without needing to get on drugs and or have surgery. Okay. Isn't that great news? (laughs) But you know what? So empowering to know. But it's, it's news that medicine doesn't want you to know. Yeah. And big food companies don't want you to know. Right. And I think the government doesn't care if you know, because if you don't know, then big food and big pharma are happy because they keep making money off Mm -hmm. of your decisions to, Mm -hmm. to feed your, your body crap, you know? So, so that being said, there are so many great, um, 
just great resources. Um, I forgot, I should have, and I'll write this down. So in the show notes, there is a, um, a, a website that you can find doctors that are specific, like thyroid doctors, like natural, cool. either naturopathic doctors or functional medicine doctors or both. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and there's some people that actually have, um, their MD and their NPD, which is naturopathic doctorate. So, um, those are rare to find that would mm -hmm. be like me deciding, okay, I really do want to go back to school so that I can treat people both in Western medicine and, you know, naturopathically, mm -hmm. Ugh, the idea of that is not <laughs> at all. Um, so, so the first thing is know that you can take control and get your symptoms better. If not make them go away completely cool. Two is start gaining more knowledge. And this episode of the fits and healthy show might be the first time that you listen to anything that starts that knowledge bank of yeah. potential power. Right. Um, mm -hmm. there is, there's one book. Okay. It's called, I want to say Hashimoto's protocol. It's by, a um, mm -hmm. a, a farm D her name's Isabella Wentz. Um, mm -hmm. she's been on, on a few podcasts, um, interviewed by a few of my, my favorite podcasters. That's yeah. a great book. Um, there's a Dr. Amy Myers, um, her book, oh, she's an MD. Her book has, it has grades in the title. Cause I know that she suffers from graves. Um, and, and, but she is more of a, an MD that's, that's Eastern minded as well. Mm -hmm. I, I, we'll put these in the show notes. Cause there's a yeah. few different great resources of books that you can start reading. Um, secondly is to look at all of the things that you can change. So, okay. like I said, um, one of the first things that I, I would tell a person is start evaluating what kind of stressors in your life you can change. Okay. Okay. Um, the person that works the night shift might not have the ability to change that stressor, mm. but if you, if you have it in your capability to change and get back off the night shift, I would try my hardest. And, and yeah. truly that was one of the main reasons that I initially started thinking about, um, getting out of anesthesia because as an anesthesiologist, I will always have to take call and unless you're part-time and, and that's, I, I started to go part-time and then I realized like, Oh, how much nicer it is. But it, yeah, the, the stress of having to be awake when your body naturally is supposed to be sleeping is a huge yeah. stressor. Yeah. Um, but when let's, let's, be technical and let's look at the health of some really important organ systems. Okay. Um, the health of the three organ systems that I'm going to talk about are directly related to your, the thyroid health. Okay. Um, do you want to guess which ones those are, which organ systems I'm putting you on the spot. You are, you always put me on the spot <laughs> <laughs> for, for those of you that listen, like she gets <laughs> essentially no prep. <laughs> I'm, I, I, don't. <laughs> I literally tell Symphony, I, I sent you a text message yesterday. I was like, I think I'm going to talk about this and this tomorrow. Right. <laughs> right. Okay, good. Her response was good. Cause I don't know much about thyroid health. So that's awesome. Like, sweet. <laughs> so Sorry. I don't even know what the question was now. Yeah, <laughs> if you had to guess which three organ systems um, have the biggest impact on your thyroid health, what would you guess? What do you mean by organ systems? So like your heart, <laughs> your lungs. Oh, okay. Your... Okay. Okay. Well, I think of your gut, like we talked about earlier. Yes. Um, I think one. of, I don't know if this is technically an organ system, but your digestive tract, um, your GI tract, your I gut, think of that. your gut, your GI tract is the okay. same thing. Cool. That's the, the only tube, one I can think of. The tube between your, <laughs> your mouth and your butthole. And, that's, that's the GI track. <laughs> I just like any chance to say butthole. I know you do. <laughs> okay. So, so the three systems that have the biggest impact on your thyroid are okay. your gut, your GI okay. tract, your gastrointestinal, okay. okay. Um, your adrenal glands. So mm. those are organs. So your mm -hmm. adrenal organs, and those mm -hmm. are little tiny organs that sit above your kidneys. Okay. Okay. And then your liver and your liver is this huge organ that sits right underneath your ribs on your right side. Um, that is basically your detoxifying organ and can take a ton of damage, but it's, it's like, it's almost like a cliff where you can damage it with, you know, 
all sorts of drugs and toxins and, and bad stuff. And then once you hit the edge of that cliff, you're going off down. And so yeah. this, is, this is where you have people that have cirrhosis. So mm-hmm. cirrhosis is basically the beginnings of end stage liver disease. And mm-hmm. once you are cirrhotic, there's no going back and climbing up that hill. Does that make mm-hmm. sense? Mm-hmm. So our liver is this, this massive organ that does so many things to detoxify and protect us from all of the crap that we expose our body to, whether it be through our GI tract or by skin or by just the environment in general. Mm-hmm. And, and, um, so those are the, the three organs that are definitely the most directly, um, affect the thyroid health. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, okay. So let's, let's talk about the one that I think is the most important. Let's talk about the gut. Now, when you first started to learn about leaky gut, what was your initial understanding and belief? (laughs) Here I go again. (laughs) Remember, here's like, I I see people that aren't watching us because we, we always uh, upload the video to our, our fit and healthy, um, YouTube channel. Uh, most people like to just hear us via podcast, but if you yeah. want to watch our beautiful faces, um, <laughs> you, you can see the lovely expressions that Symphony gives me when I give her another question that I'm like, really, Lauren, really? You're putting me on the spot again. I'm going to make you give me like an outline, like a, <laughs> no, but, but, but the thing is I, I, like, I see that look like, Oh, I don't want to feel stupid. You're don't feel stupid because yeah. the, you, you are the voice of the right. person that hasn't been to medical school. And yeah. you know, that's one of the many reasons that I wanted you to be my co-host for the yeah. show. So yeah. it's, there is, there's no wrong answer when I ask yeah. you these questions. Yeah. <laughs> so but the know. thing is, I'm the type of person that I don't want to be know. wrong. We talked about that. <laughs> I know girl. I know girl. <laughs> We're going to work through it. So, We're going to work through it. <laughs> anyways. <laughs> anyways. Well, when, do you, do you remember the first time that you started hearing about, I mean, cause the sound leaky gut sounds terrible, right? Well, honestly, when I hear leaky gut, like I think of like a leaky butthole like yeah, a, like, like you're just leaky yeah that you're just leaking and yeah. it's so gross yeah, no, exactly about. exactly exactly <laughs> um so the fact is that um you can have leaky gut and have completely normal stool mm-hmm. um leaky gut can also um manifest with diarrhea um, abnormal stool but just yeah. know that i wish that they would have picked a different terminology for yeah. leaky gut yeah. um, because it has everything to do with what's going on in the inside and yeah. not the outside. Yeah. So, so leaky gut is this thing where a lot of still Western medicine doctors are not acknowledging, mm-hmm. um, and, and aren't aware of all of the ways in which the leaky gut can affect all of the other systems of the body. Right. Yeah. And, and I truly believe that leaky gut an unhealthy gut is the, the root of, of almost all autoimmune disorders. Hmm. Um, so, so, uh, our gut. So if you, we have more bacteria in our gut that, um, than cells in our body. Like mm-hmm. we have billions, probably trillions of, of bacterial cells that live in our gut. And yeah. they, they are supposed to live in this symbiotic relationship. That's this mm-hmm. perfect balance, just like our hormones are yeah. in an ideal world. Our hormones, you know, our, our thyroid is, is always perfect. Our cortisol is, is elevated when it's supposed to, you know, lower yeah. when it's supposed to our, our, um, our sex hormones work the way they're supposed to. So we don't have, um, problems like infertility or PCOS or, yeah. you know, terrible menstrual periods, like all of these things ideally are supposed to work perfectly in harmony, but we, you know, the, in 2017, it's hard to do that. Yeah. You know, even if you are eating the, the healthiest diet, you, there's so many things that you, can't. so many other things that are factors. Yeah. yeah. So, so for instance, uh, a factor that you can't control, and I know that we've talked about this in a, a past episode, um, a factor that you can't control is how you were born mm. via mm-hmm. vaginal delivery or yeah. C-section. Yeah. And, um, and man, I think about, I, I think back to in med school and residency, how many C-sections were done just to CYA and CYA, for those of you that don't know what that means, it's cover your ass because that mm. is the state of, of affairs when it comes to medicine nowadays. Um, there, and I don't blame the OBGYNs for 
going to to C sections faster than they should. But yeah. the reality is, OBGYNs have some of the highest uh, malpractice insurance because they can be sued for eighteen years. That after- is still crazy to me. I know that's I still know. crazy to I me. Know. And there is no regulatory body that can prevent just anyone from suing you. So even if it ends up being dismissed after however much time and money is spent, there is nothing that prevents a person just randomly coming and saying, "Mm, my kid's autism that uh, I've been dealing with for the last 10 years is because you did a C-section and um, he doesn't have a normal immune system. So it's your fault. So I'm going to sue you. Like there, there's nothing. And you know, I, I, man, the healthcare, of course we had our episode with Chris on say, mm-hmm. um, I don't know the answer to fixing all of our healthcare problems, but it, it's a, a grim future that we're yeah. looking at for sure. And for those of you millennials that actually want to have kids, I feel sorry for your kids because mm. they are getting into, oof, it's scary. Yeah. Scary. So, so back to my point. So gut health can literally starts from the day you're born. Yeah. And a kid that is born via C-section has, and I don't know the numbers, but has like statistically much higher chance of having autoimmune disorders, Mm -hmm. allergies, asthma, um, all sorts of medical problems just because they were delivered via Mm C-section and didn't take the good old slippery slide down the vaginal canal. <laughs> Why you got to put it like that? I mean, it, it is what it is, you know? Um, but the, the fact is when the baby takes that slippery slide um, and, and on the first ride on first baby, it's not that, it's not that easy. It, it takes a while to get through that yeah. slippery slide. Yeah. Um, but the, the fact is when that baby goes through the vaginal canal, it ingests the, the bacterial flora that live naturally, the, the bacteria that's supposed to be there, the healthy bacteria right. in the vaginal canal of the mom. And so when they're taken out via surgery by the surgeon cutting into the, the uterus and opening up and, and bringing them out and bringing the baby directly to the, the table where the nurse rubs them down and gets them to, you know, yeah. breathe and listen to their heart and lungs. Like you're missing out on that initial exposure to mm. bacteria because mm-hmm. inside the uterus where baby's growing, it's an aseptic environment. So there's yeah. no, no bugs. When, when you hear aseptic, it's, it's no bacteria. Yeah. And all of a sudden their first exposure to the world is supposed to be swallowing mom's vaginal flora. And when C-section happens, that's the first thing. So that automatically sets them up for um, yeah. immune system problems that derive from the gut. So, so we have the gut and we have good bacteria and bad bacteria. And a lot of people, I mean, what do you think of when you hear that? Cause I, I've, what, good bacteria and bad bacteria. Yeah. I think that people don't realize, like for me, I always thought bacteria was a bad word. Like that was right. bacteria is bad. And so the difference between hearing good bacteria and bad bacteria is really eye opening because I think most people just assume bacteria is bad. Right. Right. Now that's, I, that's what I was hoping you'd ask. You, you got one mental <laughs> telepathy. <laughs> Say this. Um, but, but, and that's, that's the whole concept but behind probiotics. Mm. And I'm not telling you that you no, need to go and, and, you know, invest hundreds of dollars on probiotics. And <laughs> I mean, pro, there, there's definitely a time and place for, for probiotics, but, yeah. um, but that's, that's where the, the probiotic industry is going bananas and making a ton of money based on yeah. someone hearing this podcast and being like, Oh, well, I just need to eat a lot of, of probiotics and what yeah. fermented foods. Yeah. Right. No, I, I, I partake in fermented foods. I mean, I just had some, um, kimchi yesterday. Mm-hmm. My, my <laughs> Robert, Robert's half <laughs> Robert. Korean. He's like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's about lunchtime. Too, yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> right. Our, our bellies are, are, are growling. Um, but, but the, the whole idea of good versus bad bacteria is that there's this balance. And when you have certain bacterias that, um, get out of control and, and overgrow, they outnumber the good bacteria. And, and there have been plenty, and I've, I've talked about this on too many Lauren lives where looking (laughs) at, I know I, I lose track on how many 
I talk a lot talking about person. I'm sorry, <laughs> <laughs> but I've got a lot of info in this noggin that I, yeah. that I want people to understand so that they can help themselves. So, yeah. but the, there've been plenty of studies that have looked at obese mice and regular mice and mm. literally they've done it's, it's, it's called a fecal transplant. And it, it's, it's, it is what it, it sounds like. You literally, you take the feces of the fat mice and you transplant it into the GI tract of the skinny mice. No. <laughs> and they, they do this in humans. And there's, there's only places in the world that do this right now. And it's not, as far as I know, um, as of late, there's no places that you can, um, legally do that here in the United States. Yeah. yeah. If, if you want a, um, a fecal transplant, you have to go elsewhere outside of the United States. But, um, there are, there's a lot of good science that, that shows like total curing of autoimmune disorders that are uh, like irretractable to change of diet and medicine just by switching yes. someone's poop. Yes. By, by taking, I, I know it's crazy, right? <laughs> the first time I heard that I had the same reaction. I'm like, this is I gross. Mean, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> if you say yeah. so doc. <laughs> yeah. So, so literally taking someone like you that probably has a healthy gut microbiome. I hope so. I don't want to have my poop switched out. <laughs> well, no, but then <laughs> we end up here <laughs> right for real um i know oh my goodness okay sorry y'all um but no there but let, let's say that you had a twin sister okay okay and your your twin sister essentially has your same she, you're trying to not giggle and see in your face <laughs> Your twin I'm sister. Sorry, I'll come has, back. I'll come yeah, back. I no, promise. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> you, you have a genetically identical twin sister, but mm -hmm. um, but she is fighting obesity, and you are not. Um, and she's fighting autoimmune disorders. Like literally, one option to treat her would be to take your poop and fecal transplant into her. That's so it's, crazy, it's, right? Right. I mean, our the health of our gut is something that I think in the next five to ten years, people's eyes are going to be open completely. Like we're just at the yeah. beginning of understanding how important our our gut health is in the yeah. microbiome, and and I'm I'm convinced that if if we can really if podcasts like this and the other ones that we've mentioned in the past can really get the word out and people can really start changing their gut health that we can reverse this autoimmune disorder yeah. issue because yeah. uh, I mean, you look at statistics, uh, every single chart, uh, autoimmune disorders and cancer have all gone up mm. exponentially in the last 50, 60 years. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, back in 1900, there, uh, no one knew what autoimmune disorders were. And yeah. now they're a dime a dozen. I mean, almost everyone, yeah. you know, has some sort of autoimmune disorder, mm -hmm. right? So thyroid, so autoimmune thyroiditis is one of the, if you had to choose an autoimmune disorder, that would be the one that I would choose. And you're how like, come? Yeah, exactly. What, <laughs> why, why would why? you say it? Because <laughs> this is one of the autoimmune disorders that is treatable with medicine. If, if you change everything, your, your gut health, your nutrition, and you still are having symptoms, you can at least take medicine that will. So if you've, if you've gotten your thyroid taken out because of, of graves or thyroid cancer, you know, one of the many reasons why mm -hmm. your thyroid hormone doesn't work. You can't, like I said, you can't live without thyroid hormone. There is a drug you can take thyroid hormone the rest of your life. And, and the, for my, my people that are listening, you know, that if you stop taking your thyroid hormone, you would die. So it there, luckily there is somewhat of a cure, a cure because most people living with thyroid disease have it maintained. That yeah. being said, I want the people that have been on, let's say Synthroid. Synthroid is probably the most common drug that hypothyroid patients ha are on let's say that you've been on Synthroid for decades. Um, I'm, I'm here to tell you that you can make changes that will reverse it, lower that dose, if not get you off of it completely. And, and the sooner that you can realize that the earlier in life, the higher likelihood you are of being able to get off that medicine completely. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, so if you, you know, you're 24, 23, 23. When do you turn 24? I should know your birthday, right? 
January. Oh yeah, we're both yeah. January birthdays. That's mm-hmm. right. Are you Aquarius? <laughs> Are you Aquarius? Uh-uh. Capricorn. No, okay. Right on the end of Capricorn. Okay. And I don't even know what that means to be honest. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so that being said, if if you are given the genes of a thyroid disease and your, we want to prevent the expression of it. You're already doing everything that you should. Um, there's certain supplements that we can take that, that I will definitely talk about, um, later in the show. But, um, the first thing that you need to acknowledge is, okay, uh, whether you have the genes in your family or not for thyroid yeah. disease, you should take heed to, to natural remedies. So, yeah. So for me, even if I didn't have thyroid disease in my family, I would right. still be making these changes because I want my thyroid to function the best possible. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I would, I would start by making sure that I get my gut healthy and we'll, we're mm-hmm. going to have an entire podcast on what that means and how to do that. Okay. <laughs> Robert, write that down. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, I would, I would, um, definitely make sure that my adrenal glands are functioning mm. the way they're supposed to. And we'll have a, a talk just on that. <laughs> <laughs> and I, um, like, well, just, just quickly, I, I like, for instance, um, there's certain vitamins like B vitamins, um, making sure that your, your, um, blood sugar is balanced and vitamin C, like those are some you know, things that you can do to support adrenal function. And yeah. like I said, we'll, we'll talk about that completely. Sure. Um, and then, you know, making sure that your liver is healthy. And, um, mm. so that will be another <laughs> podcast topic because <laughs> all of these things are, are big topics that, yeah. that you don't have to be a doctor, um, to need to know how they function. Because if you understand yeah. why all these things happen, you're more than likely going to make the right decision when it's exposed to you. You can make an educated decision. Exactly. Exactly. And, um, so yeah, so, okay. So far questions, my questions. Yeah. 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 Um, so if somebody were to want to take like a holistic natural approach, um, their doctor is giving them one kind of advice that they want to take a natural way. What would be the best way to find balance between that? Because I mean, somebody, let's say somebody that doesn't have access to, um, a functional medicine doctor, right. they have a doctor that's telling them, well, you need this medication and this, but they don't want to take that approach. What would be the best thing for them to do? Okay. One of the first things I would do is eliminate certain foods that okay. can mimic, um, thyroid function that can cause thyroid, um, dysfunction essentially. So sure. the, the first two are gluten. Mm. So 88% of people that, um, have thyroid hypothyroidism Mm -hmm. feel better once they take gluten out of their diet. Yeah. And 80% of them feel better if they take, they take out dairy. Mm -hmm. And I know everyone's like, no, don't take my bread and cheese. Sorry. Yeah. (laughs) But at the end of the day, it's your choice. Like if you want to walk around, carrying excess weight, feeling brain fog, feeling low energy, um, losing hair, have brittle skin and nails. Um, if you want all of those things, by all means, enjoy your bread and and cheese. But, but at the end of the day, it's your choice. Um, but a lot of people don't realize that there are certain food groups that lead to hypothyroidism. Mm. Um, now that's not to say that all people that eat gluten will get hypothyroidism, but right out of all of the people that have hypothyroidism, 88% felt better after they took out gluten and 80% of them felt better after taking out dairy. Yeah. The, um, the other two big food categories that I would cut out, um, are sugar and soy. Mm. So yes. those, those four food groups, yeah, y- you'll be amazed. Mm-hmm. And, and, and another mm-hmm. thing that, um, I want people to realize is that After you take them out, you, especially if you're on medication for your thyroid, you have to be sensitive to the fact that, um, you might start to have symptoms of hyperthyroidism because your natural hormone production of thyroid is returning because all of a sudden you're eliminating these foods that were suppressing it. And now Mm -hmm. all of a sudden it's like your thyroid is like, Oh, 
oh, this is how I'm supposed to work. Yeah. Excellent. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Um, so there are other, other foods that you can do to support your, your thyroid. Um, one thing that I, one of my most common videos that, that people ask, okay, where's that video again is mm. the, how I make my bone broth. Yes. There's, there's yes. no one special secret to making bone broth. Um, yeah. I mean, I just, I, I found the one I like the most and you know, it's the easiest for me. I, I use, um, grass fed, grass finished beef bones from mm -hmm. a farmer that I found that's here in Southern California. Um, at, but there's so many different ways to make a bone broth, but yeah, but bone broth is one of the first places that I would start. If you want to start supporting your thyroid, yeah. um, green smoothies, you know, and, um, I, you and I both, we drink our, our shakeology every day and it's mm -hmm. full of superfoods and phytonutrients. Um, I call of, it my chocolate salad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Although mine's not always chocolate. I like to, to, <laughs> to bury mine up, but like one of the ingredients that is in Shakeology is called ashwagandha. It's an adaptogen. Mm -hmm. And I, I, before I even uh, knew what Shakeology was, I, and I started learning about all of these different nutritional supplements, because yeah. the reality is even if I'm eating a perfect hundred percent whole foods based diet all yeah. the time, I'm still lacking vitamins, minerals, and micronutrients that because of our food supply, because mm -hmm. of, um, soil in soil, 2017, yeah. because I'm not getting optimal vitamins, minerals, and micronutrients. Yeah. And, and that's why any, any person that is of, in a place of respect, as far as nutrition and, and a nutritional expert, like almost all of the podcasters that I've listened to over the years that are considered nutrition experts, almost all of them supplement. It's, mm -hmm. and, and yes, they eat whole foods based diets, but they also supplement and yeah. ashwagandha is one of the um, supplements that I was taking regularly before um, I was introduced to, to Shakeology. It's an adaptogen. And actually there've been a lot of studies looking at relationship of ashwagandha and thyroid function. And there's mm -hmm. a lot of people that just by taking that supplement have healed their thyroid. Yeah. Just that one supplement alone. And of course it's, it's in Shakeology, so I don't take it anymore, but, yeah. um, the uh, other vitamins and minerals and, and micronutrients that you can take to support your thyroid are, um, selenium. So, uh, selenium is something that if you're, if you are deficient in selenium, if you're on thyroid medication, your thyroid mm -hmm. medication isn't going to work properly because it's, it's necessary for your thyroid to work completely. So one, um, and I'm, I think, is it, I, I'm almost positive. Don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty, I'm like 99.9% .9 sure that, um, cacao nibs, which I usually put in my, my smoothie every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, cacao nibs are like chock full of selenium. There's lots of foods that are chock full of them, but yeah. that's, I mean, I, I, I know my selenium is, is good, but I think the <laughs> recommended um, daily dose, if you're going to go and get a supplement is 200 micrograms a day. Um, B vitamins, um, thiamine, magnesium, vitamin D. Um, those are all, um, su thyroid supporting uh, hmm. supplements that either you're getting in your diet or you're, you're getting in supplementation. Um, you're, iron. So if, if you are anemic mm -hmm. and your, your ferritin is low, um, your thyroid is, is going to be hypo functioning. Hmm. And so th this is just this perfect balance, right? That if everything, if you're, if you're not feeding your body with all of the fuel that it's supposed to get, yeah, all of these things get out of balance and it, it doesn't give you just one symptom. It gives you lots of symptoms. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so, so there are, um, a lot of people that are like, okay, well, what are those symptoms? So here, here's a survey of questions. And if, if you answer yes to five or more of these, I definitely want you to consider cutting out those initial foods that I talked about, specifically grains. Mm -hmm. Um, if, if you're like Lauren, I, I can't do grains, dairy, sugar, and soy. Are you kidding? If, if I, if I had to choose between all four of those, I would say, okay, at least cut out grains. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you're serious, 
eliminate all four of those yeah. and, and see how you feel. I, I think you'd yeah. be surprised. So, okay. So questions, if you answer yes to, you have recurring abdominal bloating, abdominal pain, you got stank, stank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> y'all for the if, if you're a first time listener i i have two dogs they're they're big dogs they're both about 75 pounds and I, i'm not kidding like because i i moved from oklahoma where i had a backyard and they just you know i lived on two acres so they just pooped wherever and i i never had to really worry about picking it up and now mm -hmm. i live in southern california where i don't live on two acres yeah and i have to walk them to go to the bathroom so i have to pick up poop daily it's just it's part of my life it is what it is <laughs> and literally every time they poop i'm like stank stank <laughs> <laughs> and symphony messaged me the other day <laughs> tell the story I I have, so I, we had two bedrooms, two extra bedrooms in our house. And one of them we turned into like a home gym, but the closet in there is where <laughs> my cat box is for my cat. And I, went, I can't even talk because you're already laughing. I went in there to go work out in the morning and my cat had just taken a giant poop and it was so, it was just so nasty and overwhelming in the whole room. And so I messaged Lauren and I was like, you know what? The first thing that came to my mind was stunk stunk. <laughs> I about pissed my pants when I heard that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. We have <laughs> talked about so much poop today. It's I know, unreal. right? Real. Who would have thought uh, we're talking about thyroid and we talk about poop? Cat right? poop. Cat yeah. poop. Anyways, anyways, okay. so yeah, we're back to the, if you answer yes to these five <laughs> questions, you, <laughs> um, okay. So recurring abdominal bloating, pain, mm -hmm. stank, stank gas, constipation, <laughs> um, acid reflux. So mm -hmm. essentially if your GI tract doesn't work well, say yes. Yeah. Um, if you have a first or second degree relative with celiac, which is basically mm -hmm. a gluten allergy. So mm -hmm. there's a difference between gluten allergy and gluten, um, insensitivity. Interesting. So people with gluten allergies are celiac sprue. So that's the yeah. exact diagnosis. And literally like they can be exposed to little, literally a, a thimble nail of, um, thimble nail. Is that even a word? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just made one. We're, we're going to have to it's come up with it. It's going in the fits and yep. healthy dictionary. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> just a little <laughs> tiny minuscule amount of gluten and they can have this huge reaction because celiac sprue is the, the gluten allergy versus someone that's just sensitive to gluten, but doesn't have a full on allergy. That's just called a gluten insensitivity. Mm. And so I don't have celiac sprue, but I definitely, and sensitive to gluten because when I eat gluten, I mean, I get abdominal bloating, I get stank, stank and, <laughs> and all sorts of other, other symptoms. Um, yeah. so if you have a first or second degree relative with celiac answer, yes. If you have a history of migraines, you guys, mm. man, this is, I've, I have cured. I, I need to start sending bills to all the people that I've cured, <laughs> um, that literally have never thought about, you know, they've been a migraine sufferer forever and never thought that there might be a connection with their diet to their migraines. Yeah. Um, if you have a history of migraines, answer yes to this and think about cutting out grains and gluten. Um, if you have weight gain or difficulty in losing weight, um, if you have ADD or autism, um, mm. if you have joint pain or aches, bone pain, say yes. Um, brain fog or chronic fatigue, hair mm -hmm. loss. Um, if you have known vitamin deficiencies or um, anemia, um, if you suffer from infertility, menstrual irregularities, or a low libido, um, stuff like balance issues or restless leg syndrome. In fact, I just saw Kelsey just mentioned the fact that she was struggling. She's in her third trimester of pregnancy and she's struggling with restless leg syndrome. And I can't imagine, but it's, it's a, a, a condition that literally at night, you literally feel like your legs just won't, they're restless. It's, it's, yeah. it, it can be like really stressful for people. Um, sidebar Kelsey is Lauren's best friend. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you don't know who she is, most of you probably do, but if not, yeah. when we refer to Kelsey, that's Lauren's best exactly, friend. Exactly. Exactly. And then if you have a known history of being positive for thyroid antibodies, cause mm -hmm. that's ultimately one of the, the tests that you will need to diagnose an actual autoimmune disorder to 
your thyroid, right? Mm. So if you answered yes to, to five or more of those, a hundred percent, you need to cut out grains, gluten. And I would say for sure, go ahead and just cut out dairy, sugar, and soy. Yeah. And I know some of you are like, but then there's no life. What will I eat? (laughs) And I'm here to tell you, do not fall prey to the belief, the misbelief that big food companies want you to believe that you cut those out and you're not going to have anything good to eat. You guys, your, your palate takes anywhere from 14 to 21 days to change. And I've seen so many people that start off as a client of mine that are like, I don't like that shit. And, mm-hmm. like and, <laughs> and now they're like craving Brussels sprouts. And, yeah. And, yeah. And, you know, so yep. there, there is hope. Don't, even if you're the pickiest of eaters, um, there is hope that your palate will change and your body mm-hmm. will learn to, to crave the foods that it's supposed to. And in fact, yeah. food cravings in general are not normal and people don't understand that. And I, I remember that was kind of a concept for me. It was like, wait, you mean that I'm not supposed to crave this all the time or crave mm-hmm. that all the time? No, I still, that day before my period or two, I still crave chocolate. Girl, yeah. I, I even when I eat the the best nutrition and I'm drinking Shakeology every day and, and I still, I still have that craving. I but can for, eat the walls in my house. Yeah. That day, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that, 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 that's real. Um, yeah. But the, the fact is that I, I want the person that's listening that is, is you're starting to have disbelief that you could ever, you know, make these changes and, mm-hmm. and make them long-term because the, we're not, I'm not talking about going on an elimination diet for a few days yeah. and then, like I elimination diets are there for people to be able to see how they feel when they take out certain food groups. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's so many different elimination diets. The one I like to, to refer people to it because their website is so good is the whole 30. Oh, it's just, yeah. it's one of many, like I, yeah. and it's one of the first ones that I ever actually read when I was mm-hmm. starting to learn about nutrition, which was not in medical school on yeah. my own. Um, but the whole 30 has an amazing website. Um, it's literally whole 30.com. And there's so many great free resources of if you don't want to buy the book, then you can at least just go to their website and get the free resources. So, um, so that being said there, there's a few great swaps for grains for those of you that are like, I need, I need my food. Right. Um, and in fact, I just tried one of these for the first time, the coconut wraps. Mm-hmm. Those are good. Have you tried those? Yeah, I have, but I've tried the almond ones and I like them better. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Have you snapped but, about that? Because you need to yeah. snap about that so I can screenshot it and okay. get some of <laughs> <on> my own. <laughs> Remember on Cinco de Mayo, I was eating those grain-free trip chips oh, yeah. in between each take because I was really hungry. <laughs> yeah. Those were um, cassava chips. Okay. And, mm-hmm. and, and Leah, my, my assistant, my right hand woman, um, she actually just found some, some grain free chips and I'm like, I don't know. And so she took a picture of the back and cassava flour was one of yeah. the first ingredients. And I'm like, yeah, huh. yeah. All right. All the right. ones that I found are actually really clean. Yeah. So, I mean, they're still like, I still, they're still a treat. I wouldn't eat them every day. Right. But if it's a really good substitute. Right. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Cause when I saw that, I'm like, man, that just looks like something I could overeat, but, yeah. but the ingredients look like stuff that wouldn't cause cravings. Yeah. So, okay. So coconut wraps, um, it, uh, many times people have, you know, heard talking about the whole, um, you know, instead of a, a normal hamburger, just make it a, a you know, a lettuce burger. Mm-hmm. So using thick romaine lettuce. Those are or, my jam. I yes, love those. Yes. <laughs> um, so romaine lettuce and butter lettuce are probably my two favorite kinds of lettuce to do that it makes it mm-hmm. easier. I mean, I guess you could do it with kale. I love me some kale, but I don't think I'd le- like a kale burger. That doesn't sound too good. Mm-mm. Yeah. Mm-mm. Um, <laughs> coconut flour is a great, um, substitute for normal flour. Yeah. Um, uh, if, if you're, if you're craving the carbohydrates that you're missing yeah. from the grains, you guys, sweet potatoes, there, there are so many amazing ways to eat sweet potatoes. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, and I haven't bought this book yet, but, um, actually Sean Stevenson, I think it was Sean Stevenson interviewed, um, this guy that wrote a book called the sweet potato diet. And it wasn't really a diet, but it, he has apparently all of these amazing ways that you can eat sweet potatoes. Cause he huh. essentially eats, a. a a whole foods based diet and doesn't eat processed food, but you know, his main source of carbohydrates every day are sweet potatoes. But he mm-hmm. was like, okay, I got to get creative on this. Yeah. You know? So yeah. 
like there's, oh my gosh. So at my, um, I did a, a club fits masterclass in uh, a back-to-back one in, uh, Ohio about a month ago. Mm-hmm. And one of the the biggest club fits fans, her name's Tammy. She and her husband, um, travel every time I do a masterclass and she, she actually made these, oh my gosh, uh, we'll have to, okay. Show notes. I'll have to get the recipe from Tammy and we'll have to put it in the show notes, like for real, because these muffins were freaking amazing, (laughs) like literally. And there were only like four ingredients in these chocolate sweet potato based muffins hit her husband. Doesn't even like sweet potatoes. And he, he was like, I couldn't even taste them. And I love the taste of sweet potatoes, but yeah. Um, but yeah, so sweet potato is a great substitution Uh if you're, you know, wanting, you know, carbohydrates that were filled by all of the grains that you were taking in. Um, have you tried kelp noodles yet? Mm-mm. So those- are they the clear up there? Li- they look like glass noodles, right? Yeah, Is that yeah, what they, yeah, yeah. okay. I, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be scared to try them. I just haven't like gone out of my way to try them. Yeah. The, those are actually, um, th- those are great for people that love pasta, mm. but, but you're, it, it, it almost, tricks your brain to make you think you're eating pasta because it tastes the texture and, and tastes very similar. Um, but you're not having all of the carbohydrates that are f- typically found in pasta. Zoodles are a really good substitute. Too. Yes. Zoodles, I love zoodles. And then spaghetti squash. The, mm-hmm. Those three are great yeah. substitutions because yeah. the three P's are what you're wanting to stay away from pizza, pasta, and pastries. <laughs> I know. I know. Pizza, all of- I have a shirt that says i what does it say? It says, I want abs, but I want pizza more. (laughs) (laughs) Everybody that follows me on social media knows that I'm a recovering pizza holic. Like I use that hashtag so many times. (laughs) Yeah. The struggle is real, huh? Okay. So your, your favorite place to get pizza is where? everywhere. Oh, I will ne- no, seriously. You can ask, ask yeah. my fiance. Like I will never turn down pizza. Like Are never. You serious? I'm oh, so serious. That's rough. That's rough. That's rough. <laughs> but cauliflower pizza crust is actually really, really good substitute. Yes. Take it from a pizza holic. It's a really good substitute. Do you have a particular brand that you prefer? I can't remember. It was actually one that Melissa showed me. I um, cause say, I was cause... making, I was making my own. Um, that's a lot of work. Yeah. And it, it's, it requires a lot of dairy because what it uses to oh. bind it is cheese. Oh, um, okay. and then like flour and uh, almond flour and, um, cauliflower, oh, that's way but too much there was, work. I, yeah, it was, I'm not that dedicated, yeah. not that dedicated, <laughs> that's what I'm saying, um, <laughs> but there was one, I can't remember the brand. I'll have to go look and figure out what it was, but, um, we're talking about food and my stomach is growling. I, I'm on a cleanse dude, right now. <laughs> just about to say the same thing. My stomach is growling now. I'm on a this. cleanse right now. And we're sitting uh, here talking about pizza. Yeah, Ugh. that's messed up. Anyways, that's messed up. Yeah. but I don't know what it was, but there's a lot of really good, um, already made cauliflower pizza crust you can do. And I, my fiance is a lover of Asian food. He loves Asian cuisine. Yep. So I make beef fried rice, but I use cauliflower rice and oh, yeah. if I had not told him that it was cauliflower, he, he would know. have never known. Yeah. It's the same texture, looks the same, yep. tastes the same. Yep. So it's not like the world will end if you can't have your grains. Right. Like there's plenty of really decent substitutes. Yep. Um, you know, one thing that I, I, it's a snack that I love and I'm, I'm getting some great nutrients, micronutrients in it is roasted seaweed. Mm-hmm. And that's a great substitute because it gives you that crunchy sensation that if yeah. you, if you like chips and yeah. now all of a sudden you're like, well, damn, I can't have chips, blah, 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 <laughs> you know, the roasted seaweed. It's funny. Cause I, I just bought some the other day. I usually get them on thrive market. Mm-hmm. Um, but you have to be careful with the roasted seaweed because you have to look at the ingredients because yeah. a lot of them are, are made with oils that are not kosher with me. Yeah. So yeah. the, the brand I like, oh, I can't remember, but it's it, on it. It says, made with hundred percent olive oil mm-hmm. and it's, it's non GMO organic. And so, and there, it was on sale, a family package and, and the, the woman checking me out at, at whole foods, she was like, huh. And I go, I'm telling you, like, I'm addicted to those. And then on the front of it says strangely addictive. And it's, it's true. Like I, I love yeah. that. I, I love It's a great snack alternative. <laughs> um, so, so I'm about to start, um, a, a 
my next challenge group. And I've got a, a couple of, of ladies that take my class here in, in Orange County that are going to be joining my online group. <laughs> and I was just talking to him yesterday and I'm like, look, I, I really think that there's going to be some minor changes that you're going to make in your diet that mm -hmm. you are going to be very surprised about. Mm -hmm. And, um, and <laughs> when they, when I, they heard no grains, they were like, wait, so you mean no rice? Right. Right. Especially uh, my friends that are Asian, like the idea of not eating rice, they're like, wait, <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, <laughs> but grains, so these are all grains. So wheat, rye, barley, oat, corn, rice, spelt, millet, durum, like all of these are grains that you need to eliminate and just see mm -hmm. how you feel. Just yeah. eliminate it for 21 days. Mm -hmm. I would prefer 30 though. Um, yeah and see how you feel. Mm -hmm. For, forget about your waistline. Your waistline will change. Just trust Yeah. Me. Yeah. Um, but, but remember that, you know, now your carbohydrates, you're taking a lot of your carbohydrate daily sources of carbohydrates out and we are going to have a whole episode or two. It might, it will probably be dedicated to two uh, on insulin show mm. notes, please, or the Robert, write that down as well. <laughs> um, He's about to throw his pen at right? you. <laughs> his job is becoming more and more complicated with each episode. <laughs> um, that being said, we will talk about, um, carbs per day, which is kind of, you know, ketogenic diet versus yes. low carb versus yeah. because, you know, a, a majority of the standard American diet, we're getting way too many carbohydrates that our body was not meant to have. Mm -hmm. But, um, I've definitely heard the opposite of people that eat not enough carbs have thyroid dysfunction. Mm. And, and one study that I, I looked at, um, said that if you eat less than 50 grams of carbohydrates in a day, um, in females that can lead to, um, hypothyroidism. And mm. so I don't, I don't know if, if it was the best study and I, I'm, I think the verdict is still out when it comes to that. Yeah. Um, you know, the reality is if you think that you have th thyroid issues, there are changes that you can make that you don't have to get so technical and you don't have mm. to worry about counting carbohydrates. And, um, you know, one thing that our listeners are going to hear throughout almost all of our episodes is that, um, we got to get back to eating whole natural foods Yeah, that for sure that are unprocessed, unprocessed, unprocessed. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the, the, what happens to our food and the processing, um, processing process <laughs> it leads leads to disease leads yeah. to obesity leads to autoimmune disorders leads to um cancer leads to a, a bunch of, of terrible things mm -hmm. okay so um what what's going through your head right now we've talked about a lot and i still feel like we barely touched the surface well this is like i said it's not something that you can cover in all in one day because there's so many different factors and so many different things that it's, it's different for every person. So. Yeah, most definitely. And, and, uh, you know, I was trying to think of a, a systematic way of approaching it. Um, and I mean, maybe if I was a better podcaster, I would come up with a better systematic <laughs> approach, but, um, but the <laughs> fact is I, I want, I, I mainly want the listener to walk away from this episode, um, knowing that, um, more than likely there is something either in your food, your drink, your environment, or what you are doing to your body that mm -hmm. is most likely disrupting the normal function of your thyroid hormone. Yeah. And, and if you have had any of these symptoms that we've talked about in the podcast, I definitely want your radar to be up and, and, you know, be more attuned to in, you know, in tune with your body. Yeah. And does it necessarily mean that you have to go and seek out a functional medicine doctor right away? No, because there's a lot of things that you can do on your own de novo. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, it really does start with learning. I mean, yeah. literally you can go and go on your podcast and, you know, I, I have an app, uh, not Apple. Well, an, I have iTunes, so I have an iPhone. And so my podcast app is, is where I go and I search in the magnifying glass. You can search, just use the word thyroid. And I yeah. guarantee that you're going to have a ton of different episodes that are free 
beauty mm -hmm. of podcast is it's free learning list. Obviously I want you to listen to fits and healthy, but you know, other reputable um, podcasts to listen to. And they're, and just because I haven't mentioned them doesn't mean that they aren't good. I, you know, right. I'm still, you know, every now and then I'll discover another podcast that's like, Oh, this is awesome. And they're right mm -hmm. on the same track as me and like-minded. Not that I know everything, but it, you know, if, if I come across a podcast that, that is telling me that, you know, every, you need to be on this prescription medicine and yeah. this surgery. I'm obviously I don't agree with them and I won't waste my time right. listening to them. Right. Make but, sure it's um, a credible source. Exactly. Exactly. But, um, obviously model health show, um, Ben Greenfield fitness is one of, he is kind of like, I, I really like the kind of geeky nerdy, um, sciencey ones that mm -hmm. get into the why, um, yet are entertaining in listening to them. So yeah. Ben Greenfield fitness is another one. Um, bulletproof, um, the bulletproof, yeah, radio. bulletproof radio, Dave, yeah. Dave Asprey. He's, he's actually probably, I've probably been listening to him from the beginning. Um, it, he's very uh, highly intelligent man. And he has, he interviews some of the best people and some of the, the world's leading experts on all topics that are mm. related to your health and fitness. Um, have you read his book headstrong yet? I haven't. I ordered it, but I don't know what I was thinking because uh, you know me, I'm, I'm going to listen to it and not buy it yeah. or uh, not read. I, I have yeah. the actual hard copy. I haven't bought the audio book yet, but I'm probably going to, cause I really do yeah. want to read it. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, Abel James and see, that's the thing. All of these are dudes that I'm listening. So I want us to be the female podcast that people go to for health and fitness. Rock on. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> exactly. And obviously we're going to have both male and female audience yeah. listeners and we appreciate them both. But, but that was one thing that I, that crossed my mind was that all of these podcasts that I really, mine is Shalene Johnson. I love me some Shalene Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but most of the podcasts that I enjoy listening to are men. And mm -hmm. so we got to change that because mm -hmm girl bosses rule. And, That's right. And you know, um, so, so th for the listeners, I want them to just be empowered by knowledge, start learning, yeah. start reading and listening to some good podcasts and then start making changes in your life because mm -hmm. bottom line is you get one life and you know, yeah. it's, it's your choice. And if now you know that, um, okay, I, I've said yes to way more than five of those questions. So I probably have hypothyroidism. Mm -hmm. So should I cut out grains? Should I cut mm -hmm. out dairy? Yes. The answer is yes, yes. And yeah. yes. Yeah. And, and yet, it, is it going to be hard? Yeah. It's not easy. And in fact, you will go through withdrawals, especially from sugar. Mm -hmm. uh, oh man, sugar withdrawals. If you're uh, eating sugar on a daily basis and you decide to, to go cold Turkey, I mean, it works on the brain just like a, an illegal drug. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. so start making these changes, um, start learning how to heal your gut. And of course we're going to have an episode where we talk, it'll probably be two episodes that we talk about that and, um, start learning how to heal your liver and your adrenal glands. And you know, so much of it can be done naturally after you've done everything naturally. If you need a Western medicine doctor, be very just, you know, I learned this in med school. Yeah. Not all doctors are created equal. Mm -hmm. I, I remember my, uh, my grandmother, she was put on some some psych psychotropic medicines for uh, like, I, I remember I knew enough in med school that I remember thinking when my, my dad told me what she was put on, remember thinking, wait, that's for psychotic patients. Why would her doctor put her on that? And yeah. then come to find out her doctor had been her doctor for like 80 years. And he himself was like, 90 years old and not to say that <laughs> you, you don't have, you know, value as a doctor at 90, yeah, but for yeah. the most part, you know, I, not it's all probably time to retire. Uh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so just, you know, I like, especially if you're going to have surgery, I always tell people, look, you want to go to the surgeon that people in the yeah. OR want to go to. Yeah. And same way with, with this, you, you want to go to a functional medicine doctor that, that, you know, people that you respect go to mm -hmm. and don't just assume that your local, you know, Mayberry RSD doctor knows everything. Cause yeah, more than likely they, they have to keep, you know, their continuing medical education, their CMEs up to mm -hmm. date on their specialty, but unless they seek out 
knowledge about nutrition and natural ways of yeah. healing, they don't know. So you don't know what you don't know. And, um, and don't assume that they're going to know, you know, ways to heal it naturally. They're yeah. most likely they're going to put you on a prescription medicine that they believe. And you'll most likely believe that you're going to have to be on the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to tell you, that's what big pharma and, and food companies want you to believe because yeah. that way it's money in their pocket the rest of their life. Yeah. So, okay, dude, like I need water because we <laughs> talk so much. I, I don't even know how long this, this episode is, is turning into because I didn't getting close to two hours. Awesome. <laughs> there we go. Talking McTalkerson right here, right here. So yeah. So, um, man, anything that I'm leaving out, I mean, I'm sure there is, but right. like, I didn't even go into the technical thing of yeah. like T3 versus T4 and yeah. T4 and all that kind of yeah. stuff. One, one thing that uh, I will say is that, um, interpretation of labs is going to be totally different if you go to just an endocrinologist versus an, a functional medicine doctor mm -hmm. and, um, I, I functional medicine just, yeah, I'm a big believer in them. So yeah, agree. But, but yeah, so, wow, we talked a lot. I talked a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, nothing that you can think that we need to, or any questions that you have? No, not okay. that I can think of right now. You're just thinking about that growling stomach, aren't I'm you? I'm just thinking about pizza now. I even have a pizza. I have a pizza snow globe on my desk. No, you I don't. don't. Yes, I do. I don't think you understand how much I really love pizza. Oh, this wow. Was from, this was a gift from someone. No way. <laughs> One of my friends, um, she wow. lives in San Diego. Shout out to Charlene because she sent me a pizza snow globe. Oh, That's my. how much I love pizza. That's so awesome. Now, and I'm on a cleanse. I'm on a three-week cleanse right now. And uh -huh. all I can think about is pizza. <laughs> That is awesome. That is awesome. Well, and, and, you know, we'll, we'll actually, we'll do um, a podcast about um, the liver and, and it, all of its functions because so much of your, your cleanse has to do with your mm -hmm. liver. And, mm -hmm. and so, so we'll, we'll talk about that in an upcoming podcast, Yeah, maybe after you're done with it, because yeah. <laughs> so all right, Love on right. the brain. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Well, um, we thank you for listening. Um, this, like I said, since it's approaching two hours, we're definitely going to break this up into two episodes. So mm. thank you for listening to both parts <laughs> of this long winded thing. Um, if anything, I hope that it starts to open people's minds up yeah. to taking control of their own health and, mm -hmm. and knowing that so many of the ailments that you and symptoms that you're having um, yeah. really can be made better, if not reversed completely. And it, it all starts with you gaining the knowledge, the potential power. So, mm -hmm. Symphony, what message do we have for our listeners? You are a good person and you deserve good things to happen to you. Including good health. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we thank you guys and hope that you have a day that is very fit and healthy. Ciao. Make sure that you find us on social media. You can find Symphony on Instagram and Facebook at Symphony. So that's C-I-N-T-H-A-N-I-E. And on Snapchat at Symphony P. And find me on social media platforms like Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, all at Club Fitz Fitness. Remember, that's F-I-T-Z Fitness. And on Snapchat, just at Club Fits. I appreciate your time listening so much. If you enjoyed this episode of the Fits and Healthy podcast, can you please go do me a favor and go subscribe at whatever platform that it is that you listen to podcasts. Leave a review. We read every single review and we appreciate the time that you take to leave your thoughts and opinions. Now, also remember, while I am a medical doctor, the information I provide here is not intended to provide medical advice or a professional diagnosis, opinion, treatment, or services to you or to any other individual. I am providing general information for educational and informational purposes only, and it is not a substitute for medical or professional care. You should not use this information in place of a visit, call, consultation, or the advice of your physician or other healthcare provider. The information I share is not intended to treat, cure, or diagnose any disease or medical condition. If you believe you have a medical emergency, just call 911 immediately or your physician. Now, 
enough of that medical legal jargon. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. I appreciate your time. Now go live a fits and healthy life.